And tonight's game brought to you in HDTV by LG. Life's good. And the Syracuse fans here, as we look at the officials, Hagen, Sanzier, and Breeding, most disappointed. The Orangemen, many fans stayed home and watched the first game only to see Butler upset the big orange. They've come back out in force, and with the exception of the blue jerseys or blue shirts you see in the crowd, this is an all Cornell crowd. They're only a hour drive from Ithaca. Kentucky and White. This is Wall, the freshman of the year. Cornell starts out in man to man. They're trying to screen Patrick Patterson into the low block. Darius Miller had 20 in the last tournament game, his career high. Patterson comes up top. Bledsoe, 9 for 12, three point shooting. The scramble and the first tie up, it'll go to Cornell. What a contrast. The colors red and blue. Five appearances in the NCAA for Cornell. They've won their first two games the getting here to the Sweet 16 in Kentucky. The thoroughbreds from the Bluegrass State, 100 wins, 50 appearances, seven national titles, 21 Sweet 16s. It's a dream for the media. The contrast here, the longest shots left, number 12 Cornell, the top team left, the number one Kentucky Wildcats with two number ones going Kansas, and then tonight Syracuse. Foot, the big seven footer. Run a lot of handoffs, pull the big guys away from the basket, get back cuts. Whitman goes inside and is denied. Wall the other way. Kentucky loves to run it. Wall, he runs right over the Cornell player, and the foul is on Wall as Jake set up position. And John Jake's only scored 11 points on the entire season last year, just steps in and really slides in. Probably wasn't really set there, but Cornell. I had to play five on one defensively against any ball handler. They want to make sure they stay in front, make Kentucky shoot over the top, and they don't want to give them. Robleski heels inside, then feeds it to Whitman, batted away by Wall. A steal. No, it's uh, Miller with the steal. He comes in the other way, doesn't get the bounce. Foot with the rebound. Foot averaged eight a game. And they'll do a nice job getting back in Kentucky. Really didn't run after an offensive board. The first three-point attempt doesn't fall for Lewis Dale the third. He was uh, Ivy League Player of the Year as a sophomore. Whitman, the Ivy League Player of the Year this year. Inside uh, Cousins, rebound Dale. He's only 5'11", but he can climb. This team makes about 10 threes a game on average. You go under a screen, they will shoot over the top, and Ryan Whitman has the quickest trigger in the country. He's very fast in the catch to the release. Dale and Robleski play catch, both under six feet into the seven-footer foot. Against Cousins, scores. And the roar of approval from what is a highly partisan Cornell crowd. Kentucky doesn't want to double because foot a good passer, and this is a great three-point shooting team. Bledsoe nearly walked, but kept one foot down. Cousins takes it in and scores. Marcus Cousins. Just a nice dribble drop move into the middle and then a drop step to the basket. And Foot did a nice job of not fouling there. Allen, a freshman Kentucky team. Wall and All America first team. Cousins makes the second five in the nation. And this team can really spread you out. Jakes fires and he too is short. Wall to Bledsoe. Miller on this side. Looking for Cousins inside against Foot. Nice job by Robleski with his help side defense. Helps on the drive and then gets back to his man Bledsoe. Patterson, the junior, backs his way in. He's short. Rebound, Jakes. And Jakes does not have the size or the strength of Patterson, but he really fought him there. And Foot came over from the weak side to make him shoot over two. This is Whitman. His dad was the MVP in the Big Ten. And Whitman shows why he's one of the many sharpshooters on this Cornell team. He leads them in scoring. Wall tries to answer with a three. No, Dale the other way for the red. And Whitman makes so many good decisions. Turned down the shuffle cut and came off the little down screen. And as soon as he catches it, it is up. Dale spins, clears, and hits. And Cornell jumps out to a 7-2 early lead. Well, this is exactly what Cornell wanted. Now it looks like they're dropping back in a little zone. 2-3 zone with foot in the middle.
Bledsoe to the baseline. And a turnover. Dale comes up with it. Maintains his balance. Now Lewis Dale, Ivy League player of the year two years ago. He is unflappable at the point. Whitman in the corner. Another three. Not this time. Well, those shot fakes have such credibility because they can hit those shots and defenders go flying by. Into Patterson. Double team. Over foot. And foot rebounds. And what a great job by Jeff Foot. He came over there and challenged that shot with both hands straight up at seven feet tall and did not foul. And in the rebound, took a slap in the face from one of the Wildcats and uh, Undaunted goes on to work. Long three, and it's Dale. This is what they've done all year, the Ivy League champs. Five minutes into the game, 10 to two, Cornell. Kentucky has hit only one of six field goal attempts. Stick it with that 2-3 zone. Cousins takes it in with a power move. He has all four Kentucky points. A nice dive from the high post by DeMarcus Cousins off the penetration. It's so hard to guard this Cornell team. You have got to guard the lines. You've got to guard the three-point line, and you've got to keep them off the, the free throw line as well. Dale. Obleski. Whitman, Foote, and Jakes, the offense for Cornell. They all will shoot the three except for the big seven-foot center. Short clock, 7-6. Dale from long range. That was close. And no Cornell Big Red are going to the offensive glass at all. If it's a long rebound, they might stick around, but otherwise they're going to get back. Man to man after the miss. Miller takes it inside to Wall. They're, they're doubling everybody in the post, even John Wall. Patterson can't hit the three, but the long rebound out to Bledsoe. New clock for Kentucky. And Cousins left alone as another easy two. All six points for DeMarcus Cousins, all in tight. Well, the only way that Cornell's been hurt thus far in their half-court defense is by giving up penetration into the middle. Just stays up top, sets screens. And There's the steal by Wall, and he is fouled. No basket. Robleski fouled him on the way to the basket. How many threes will Cornell count tonight? They've used it early. Four-point lead. Before tonight's game in Syracuse, Cornell coach Steve Donahue. The best loose ball team in college basketball. That's why we win. That's why we win. That's why we're going to win tonight. Let's go. Here we go. Not shoot the three. Said Donahue, go for every loose ball. That's how we're going to win the game against Kentucky. And it's interesting, the very first play of the game was a scramble, and Cornell able to get the arrow on the play. Well, this team is not known for its defense, but a solid defensive team where it sets itself apart is its ability to shoot three-point shots. Ten made threes per game, 43% from that three-point line as a team. And thus far in the game, Lewis Dale and Ryan Whitman have both knocked down open threes. Donahue sends in George Reeves, 6'4 senior, and Mark Curry, who played at Kentucky, started almost all of his sophomore season before transferring to Cornell. He wears number 42. Liggins is in for the first time for Kentucky, and so is Daniel Orton in the post. Wall to Orton. 2-3 zone, and they're so much bigger along the baseline. If there's any penetration into that zone, they can get it down low to either or, or Patrick Patterson. You also have to watch the lob to John Wall. They like to screen the zone and throw the lob. So all four baskets by Kentucky, Lands, three by Cousins, and now Orton replacing Cousins. It's mostly come off the penetration. This is Reeves. Outside Robleski. He may be the best of the three-point shooters. Whitman's the star. And it's taken away quickly by Darius Miller. And it's Wall the other way. Liggins is fouled plus one. Kentucky is tied. And with this free throw attempt can take its first lead. Well, Cornell's offense has to help its defense. They cannot turn the ball over. That is going to give Kentucky some runouts. The nice steal by Darius Miller after the drive, the baseline drive by Ryan Whitman. And Adam Wire can't afford to foul there. You're given an easy basket. 
And then a chance for the conventional three point play. At the line, DeAndre Liggins, the sophomore from Chicago. We're in number 34, the Mike Casey, Kenny Walker, Scott Patchett carried that number for the Cats, and he gives Kentucky its first advantage at the 12 27 mark. Cornell jumped out 10 2, but Kentucky, due to its uh, number one seed form, number two in the nation most of the year, graded off for number one, only lost two games. South Carolina and Tennessee, both on the road. Dale can't penetrate, looks for help. Where is it? Foot has it knocked away out of bounds. Orton of Kentucky. Masters Live screams exclusive video of Amen Corner Live, 15 and 16 Live, featured group live plus Masters Extra, showing bonus coverage of the entire field at cbssports.com slash Masters Live and Masters.com. Coming up, the weekend after the final four. There's some interior movement, but unable to hit was Curry, the ex-Kentucky player. Good feed from foot. A little quick on the shot because Orton changed it. Patterson, the big man, the junior outside to nail a three. And quite a run now for Kentucky. 12-0. Dale takes it inside with the big Sequoias and then weaves out Robleski. Look at the... Wall pick him up. Wall 6-4 and long. Now, Kentucky's done a better job of staying with three-point shooters, even when there's penetration. Make them finish over you. You can't give up open threes by coming off your man. Robleski misses, but a second chance by Mark Curry. Curry, a four-point student, both at Kentucky and at Colgate. Foot has it knocked away in the foul. Reaching in was Liggins. A Kentucky mighty strong inside. Most of their points scored there, and then Patrick Patterson, the big guy at 6'9", he knows the long range. Four. And here, Greg, it was Cornell running out to a 10-2 early lead, but 12 unanswered by Kentucky to give the Wildcats a four-point lead, but an inbounds pass and a quick score by Jeff Foote, the seven-foot center who started his career at St. Bonaventure as a walk-on, transferred to Cornell, and has gained uh, some 65 pounds and has become quite a player, an all Ivy Leaguer. That's going to be called a foul on a push. And a reminder that coming up at the half, AT&T at the half with Messrs. Gumbel, Anthony, and Davis. They'll take you out for a live look at that Xavier Kansas State game. Get you caught up on the latest tournament news plus an AT&T Naismith watch update. All coming up on AT&T at the half. Lewis Dale with his first foul. This is Alex Tyler. He's been a starter since a sophomore, but injured this year, and that has given John Jakes a chance to play. And Dale with a near steal. Patterson, who took only four three-point shots his first two years, this year he's become a lethal weapon for Kentucky outside, and he's made his only three-point attempt tonight. Penetration has been hurting this team. They can't just settle for jump shots. You've got to get the ball. Inside, that's where Kentucky has got the advantage, is in the paint where they have scored most of their points thus far in the game. Darnell Dodson into the game, misses his first three, but the long rebound stays with Kentucky. Liggins, wall will fire from long range. Can't hit the three. Foot with the rebound. Cornell with a chance to tie it at 14-12 as they head up court with Dale. And even though that wasn't a bad shot, you feel like Kentucky's settling just a bit. Dale sends it inside to Foot, working against Orton. And Orton defends it well. Foot just lost it on the way up. He had plenty of time to make it through. Passes too long for Dotson. Turnover, Kentucky. And Kentucky trying to push the pace, but they still have to make good decisions. This is a superior athletic team, and they want to try to take running opportunities when they're there. But when it's not there, they could still score running their half-court offense if they punch the ball inside and keep punching the lane off the dribble. We saw Ramon, Ramon Harris come in, number five for Dotson. And Jeff Reeves into the lineup again for Cornell. Back to foot. Had trouble with Orton the first time. Orton falls down. And the foul. A little too much acting on Orton's part. And did not draw the whistle. The single coverage, so Foot able to go one on one in the post. Just backs him down, and you're right, that was a, a clear flop. 
But Patrick Patterson came over and just fouled him on the way up. Foot trying to use that left hand to finish the play. Went to St. Bonnie's as a uh, walk on. His mother, a nurse, uh, saw how much these uh, Cornell players and coaches cared about uh, Khalid Gant when he uh, fractured a vertebra in his neck. And she said, You know, I've got a son over at St. Bonaventure. They don't seem to think he can play much, but he's tall. He said, You're in seven feet. Come on over, says Steve Donahue. He's had a terrific year. Two time Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year led the Ivy League in field goal percentage and block shots. But not a very good free throw shooter. No, under 60% on the season. So nothing out of that position for Cornell. 14 to 12, Kentucky. Cornell going man to man. The challenge for Cornell is to stay in front of these athletic Kentucky drivers. And DeMarcus Cousin, the big bulk down low, is back in the game. Asking for the ball. Bledsoe takes the two-pointer. And the rebound hauled in by Adam Wire. And a turnover. And Liggins was uh, blocking the path of Jeff Reeves. And Reeves wanted to get to the ball, could not. So he, he sent Liggins halfway to the exit. Well, could have been called a foul, but probably a good no call by the officials. It didn't impact the play. Kentucky was going to get it anyway. Some good no call. So the 1 3 1 put on by Cornell. That reads out top. Whitman, the top scorer for Cornell, taking a breather at this point. Side goes Bledsoe oh. with a scooper. His first basket. You want to try to make Bledsoe put the ball on the deck, but you don't want to go for shot fakes. And he's got two Cornell defenders in a row up in the air on shot fakes, and he's been able to drive it. John Wall on the bench currently for Kentucky taking a breather. Lewis Dale is the one guy that can make plays off the dribble. Look at that, they take it away again, and this time it's Cousins, and then the long pass to Harris, and he is fouled by Jeff Reeves. How quick are these Kentucky players defensively? Well, they're quick, they're strong, and long arm, but you got to stay down defensively on a shot fake, and Bledsoe showing just extraordinary ability to get past Mark Curry. And make that circus shot with the right hand. He's got a ton of ability, and he's had a great NCAA tournament. It was John Jakes with a foul, his first. Let's over to chat with Coach John Calipari. Calipari, the first coach in the history of college basketball, five consecutive 30 win seasons. NCAA March Madness on demand, streaming the men's division one NCAA championship online for free. You can watch any game anytime, NCAA.com. Harris, who was a starter last year, now a senior and is the number nine guy on Calipari's uh, rotation. Well, he's a talented freshman. Second chance, however, and Stevenson comes up with the ball and it's knocked out of bounds to Kentucky. Stevenson thought he was fouled. You know, Kentucky on the defensive end has been doing a very good job of staying with three-point shooters outside of the first few minutes of the ball game. Cornell's not gotten any open looks from the three-point line. Whitman back in for Cornell. John Wall still getting a rest for Kentucky. There's a backdoor pass to Harris. And a foul against Cornell before the shot. A break in Syracuse. Just under eight minutes left in this first half. And Kentucky by four. Into the Kentucky huddle. And Calipari has to be pleased by the fact that his bigger, taller Kentucky Wildcats have scored 12 of their 16 points in the paint, outscoring Cornell 12 to 4. Meanwhile, they've defended the three-point shot well. Only two made by the Big Red. Here in Syracuse, 7.52 remaining in the second half. And the ball squirts out of bounds to Cornell. A rare turnover by Kentucky. Only their fifth of the game. And Perry Stevenson couldn't have been more wide open on that out of bounds underneath play. He might have surprised himself by how open he was and just bobbled the ball out of bounds when Jeff Foote came over to try to pressure that shot. A little back court pressure by Kentucky with Wall back into the game. He had about a three, four minute rest. Robleski brings it in. 
Cornell made a couple of quick threes to start the game, but they've not been able to really get many shots off from outside the line. There's a foul by the Wildcats trying to step into the cutter. Nice adjustment by Steve Donahue to put Jeff Foote out on the perimeter to run that little 2-1-2 two -two set that he runs with cutters coming across the middle. DeAndre Liggins with his second foul. He's going to come out, and Ramon Harris returns for Kentucky. Having Jeff Foote, even though he's not going to make a, a play on the perimeter, having him be able to drag a big guy away is awfully nice. Well, that's good defense by Patterson. He was uh, defending two men and was able to deny what appeared to be a Cornell layup. This Kentucky team is very long armed and very athletic, and they really get out and get after you defensively. And that's been one of the more interesting things about this team. You, know, you think a, a team this young isn't going to value defense. This team has really defended all year long. Robleski, Curry to Dale. Whitman, the leading scorer for Cornell, hasn't gotten many shots. Good pass to the foot, and the foul on the hold as Curry tried to break underneath. A good pass by Whitman into Jeff Foote. And Foote, a very good passer, averages about two and a half assists per game. But Ramon Harris does a nice job of chasing him off that screen. And instead of just going up with it, Foote passes it and was able to draw the foul. Pass in to Foote, and he lays it in. Good read by Robleski on the pass in. Well, Jeff Foote sets a screen and immediately curls to the basket. That's the second bucket he's gotten off of out-of-bounds underneath plays. They have out-executed Kentucky on out-of-bounds situations. Foot with six to lead the Big Red. 2-3 zone, Curry in the middle. And Cousins, that's four for four, all from close range. Well, he's just got great feet. If you're not going to double cover him in that low post, he's just going to be able to spin baseline and overpower Mark Curry. The freshman Cousins with eight to lead Kentucky. In the foot. Look at Cousins cut him off. And that's dual possession, and the arrow points to the Wildcats. Well, you can see Cousins just wheels, gets that right arm out, hooks just a little bit, but they're not going to call that. That's just a terrific individual move by DeMarcus Cousins down in the low post. He's got outstanding footwork, especially for a guy his size. and at his young age. Adam Wire comes on the court for Cornell, joining Dale Foote, Whitman, and Reeves. Wall, Patterson, Cousins underneath. That's Bledsoe on the baseline. And Harris, the only reserve on the court for Kentucky. 1-3-1, Harris. Going fall. So that's what Cornell wants to make Kentucky do, is shoot it over the top. They don't want to give up points in the paint they want him to shoot jump shots they'll have a jump shooting contest with kentucky any day look again at, great footwork look at cousins reaching in and then the steal at the other end by adam wire and still an outstanding play by demarcus cousins dale from three and fall so the strength of this cornell team straight and this is the strength of the wildcats as patterson out hustles the defense of the big red down court for an easy two well, whenever John Wall grabs a rebound, he is a one-man fast break, and DeMar uh, Patrick Patterson just leaked out a little bit early. He just can't get the ball to Whitman for a three. And Whitman guarded by Ramon Harris. He's done a nice job of staying with him, not helping off at all. Dale has Bledsoe on him. Finally, to Whitman, and that's going to be a blocking foul on Adam Wire of Cornell. John Wall, that's just a great pass ahead. And Patrick Patterson getting rewarded for sprinting the floor, even though he left a little bit early. And Wall is such a great passer. Steve Donahue making three changes in the corner. Now lineup, Reeves on the court, along with uh, Alex Tyler, number 33, 42 Curry, 20 Whitman, and Robleski, number three. 2-3 zone, and Kentucky looking to screen the zone. Miller for three. And look at Patterson, just so much taller and stronger over the top. So hard to get a block out in this 2-3 zone. 
Nice feed underneath the Orton, a block, and a foul on Cornell. Well, Kentucky has been dominating the lane. Whether it's off the dribble or a drop off, early on it was DeMarcus Cousins scoring six quick points, a little drop off pass to Daniel Orton, and then a penetration by Eric Bledsoe. When Kentucky gets it into the lane, they have been scoring with ease. Whitman picks up his first foul. Orton has a bread allowed as he looks for his third point of the game. He's a 52% shooter from the line on the year. If there is an Achilles for Kentucky, it's free throw shooting. They've been in the 200s in the nation, shooting around two out of three. They're one for four today. But since trailing 10 to two, they've outscored Cornell 18 to four, 19 to four. And a basketball lead of a touchdown for John Calipari. Working on Marcus Cousins. I mean, Lewis Dale has really had a hard time freeing himself up from Eric Bledsoe. Eric Bledsoe, an outstanding individual defender. He did a great job in the second round on Ishmael Smith, the speedy point guard for Wake Forest, and he's doing an equally good job on Lewis Dale. Whitman inside the foot. Orton defending him. There's the double team. The pass to Dale couldn't get anything off. Recovery. That's Dale. Oh, what a block by Orton. They're going to call a goal, Tim? Yes. Yes. Oh, that looked like a pretty good block. Oh, certainly high up there, but Dale lofted it just up. That was awfully close to being at the apex rather than on the way down. Uh, much needed, too, for Steve Donahue's Ivy League champions. He won 29 games. That's not only a Cornell record, but an Ivy League record. Darlings from Ithaca, Cornell, a long shot left in a tournament that's been loaded with upsets. Defensive change going back to man to man, playing the three point line. There's the block by Foot and the recover by Dale. Foot had 62 blocks coming in. I need to get a touch for Ryan Whitman. Dale maneuvering, almost lost the ball. Dale. Doesn't go down. Now it comes the wall. Here come the Cats. And look at the speed. Oh, Miller. Set up by Wall. Do they cover the 94 feet in a hurry? Ashley Judd and the Kentucky fans love what they see. West Virginia waits for the winner. On Saturday, Kentucky 9-0 in fast break points. Like John Wall shot out of a cannon. Incredible speed in the open floor. Cornell desperately needs one of those patented threes to fall. They have only two trays in the game. Here's Whitman. Harris by Wall. He sets up. No, it is Wall. As Miller was the one with the defense, sets up Wall. Usually it's the other way around. The unselfish Wall, he has a free trip. John Wall in transition to Darius Miller with the great finish. Kentucky exerting its strength in Syracuse. Yeah, we knew it was a matchup of outside strength Cornell against inside power of Kentucky and power wins. They're on a 23 to 6 run. The men in the blue and white silks, the thoroughbreds from Kentucky. Well, they've done a really good job defensively. They've stayed right with Ryan Whitman. Aside from that first three he hit, he hasn't been able to breathe from that three-point line. And Kentucky is turning Cornell over. Nine Cornell turnovers. They've gone the other way with seven Kentucky steals, and they're getting open court opportunities. And that's where Kentucky can be absolutely devastating. Meanwhile, the defense of Kentucky just shutting off the outside shooting power. Only two successful threes from Cornell, and they really Shackled uh, Whitman now with the ball. He just can't find an opening. And they've got, look at there, they just knock it away. And there's the long arms of Darius Miller. Batted out of bounds to Cornell. We got 2.40 to go in the first half. Can anyone score on Kentucky? Welcome back to Syracuse. A look at the Infinity Coaches Spotlight. Steve Donahue in his 10th year, three straight Ivy League titles. They'd only won one Ivy League championship in their history. But Donahue's team's three in a row. 10 years with Fran Dunphy at Penn as an assistant. Oh, off the foot, up foot, out of bounds to Kentucky. Donahue, 47 years uh, young. He uh, 
is the, you, you just hear everyone who knows him says such wonderful things about him as a man as well as a coach. And uh, blessed with this senior class, the best ever in the history of basketball at Cornell. But they're playing a team that's a number one seed for a good reason, and they're driving home the point. It's Darius Miller for three. Well, Miller spotting up on the opposite sideline, the penetration from the right side into the middle. And that draws the defense, and you can't let Kentucky shoot standstill jump shots. There's another deflection and steal by Patterson. Sets up Bledsoe. Bledsoe to Wall. They're making it look easy. These. Kentucky Wildcats showing you why they blew out Wake Forest and East Tennessee State by an average of 29 and a half points in their first two wins. Well, they're not letting Cornell make passes. Cornell's had great difficulty making any kind of pass. And Wall sets up a roadblock for Whitman, who's gotten off only three shots in the game. The penetration by Wall draws everybody into the lane. A long closeout to Darius Miller for Ryan Whitman. Couldn't get there. And Anytime there's a turnover, they are just passing the ball ahead, and Eric Bledsoe, who ran right underneath that ball, passed ahead, just lobs it up to John Wall, and Wall so explosive off the floor. Kentucky's really sapped the enthusiasm out of this crowd that was so pro Cornell at the start. Whitman finally gets off a shot, and it won't fall. Rebound to Bledsoe. Cornell has not hit a three-point shot in almost 13 minutes. That's Kicks down to the one-minute mark. What a run after a 10-2 start for the Big Red. Almost a turnover. Cousins and a foul. Well, Cornell's turnovers have been a big difference in this ball game. They have been forced by this great Kentucky defense. And Kentucky long, athletic, and they really work hard on the defensive end. Whitman picks up his second foul that sends Cousins to the line for one and one. And Patterson gets the rebound. And the size of Kentucky just overpowering at both ends of the court. Well, it's the size, the athleticism, and plus they work so hard. This is a hard working Kentucky team. You don't defend like this without working your tail off collectively. And Kentucky has worked their tails off all season long on the defensive end. Bledsoe for three. Foot gets pushed from behind. And Cornell saves. Dale brings it up. Five second difference in the clocks. They give Cornell a big lift that they could make a three before the buzzer just to give them something uh, positive to chew on at the intermission. They haven't gotten an awful lot of open looks. Kentucky has defended that three-point line extraordinarily well. Cornell with six points in the last 15 minutes. Another deflection, and Patterson just too tall for the tallest of the Big Red. Miller at the other end with seven seconds. Another easy lay-in. This time it's Ramon Harris that gets two. Two, one, Whitman, and... What a start for Cornell, 10-2. But what a finish for the Big Blue of Kentucky as they double the score at halftime, a 30-6 run to end the half. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel with AT&T at the half after a message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports, the exclusive home of the men's NCAA basketball championship. And it was all Kentucky sense. Well, Kentucky's done a great job of defending the line, that three-point line. There's been nothing open outside of the first two or three minutes for this Cornell team. Finally, Dale open, but he moves inside and misses the 15-footer. Even, even that was contested. Bledsoe had a hand up and changed that shot just a bit. Deflected and taken away by Cornell. Dale. And he's blocked by Wall. That's where you mean long. He's 6'4", but he plays like he's 6'7", John Wall. You can almost add four inches to the height of every Kentucky player in terms of their wingspan. Well, there are very few times Lewis Dale would take that ball to the rack and get it blocked with the schedule that his team plays. But Kentucky has a team full of shot blockers. They go after every shot and try to erase it up top. They average over seven blocks a game in the Southeastern Conference. Cousins jams his way in, and the foul will be on Cousins for the charge. 
Yeah, I thought the Cornell defender was right underneath the basket. Where else was Cousins going to go? And that's under the basket. That's a bad call. You've got to allow that uh, imaginary line from basket down, and eventually we're going to see that line underneath the basket where you can't get that cheap blocking foul. You know, they're trying to get it in now. It's just a bureaucracy takes four years to get all the way through just to paint a little line on the floor, but ultimately they'll get it in the game. Into foot, looking for an open man. There is none. So foot takes the shot himself. Look how high he had to take that shot. And there are four white jerseys right there to pull down the rebound. And Walls streaking into the offensive end. Miller for three. Whitman the other way for Cornell. Not sure that Kentucky necessarily wanted that shot. And the threes aren't falling. Jakes, who had a big game in the victory last weekend. Two for ten now for Cornell from outside the line. Beating Wisconsin, Jakes, one of the many stars. They took Temple out. By a 13 points, 18 point win against the Badgers. Everything seemed to go right for the Big Red. And that's going to be a blocking foul on Cornell. Well, Cornell is a great three point shooting team, but they haven't had any open threes against this outstanding Kentucky defense. Kentucky really playing that line. Darius Miller going underneath the screen. That was probably the best shot that Cornell got in that first half after the first two that they hit to open up the game. Lewis Dale hit one and then Ryan Whitman hit one. Outside of that, that was the best opportunity that Whitman got. Both in the game now for Kentucky. Now stand man to man. And a turnover. Good defense by Jakes of Cornell forcing the Aaron pass. Calipari battling on the sideline, not happy with that execution. Well, it's just a bad pass by Liggins. He needs to dribble once to the corner to set up the angle to be able to pass the ball. He's essentially leading his postman out of bounds even if he caught the ball. Passing angles into the post are really important. Only three Cornell players have scored. Dale gets the roll. He has nine to lead the Big Red. That's the first basket in a long, long time for Cornell. Dale coming off the ball screen and didn't even use his guide hand. Just tried to get that ball up off the backboard as quickly as possible. Well, it's going to be a walk on Ramon Harris and Cornell fans and those that came here without a rooting interest, especially. In, what a tough day for Central New York fans. Syracuse gets knocked out by Butler earlier today. And then Cornell, a lot of those fans came here after watching Syracuse on CBS earlier, came to this game wanting to root hard for Cornell, their neighbors just an hour away. But uh, that was extinguished. That's a block by Orton right at the rim. Donahue wanted Golden. <laughs> this is a talented team. Hello, John Wall, the freshman player of the year in the country. He has four points, but he's the kind of athlete that you know, he's, he doesn't seem selfish at all. He doesn't care about his points. He loves setting up others. He's got five assists, six rebounds, four points. Wall. That's what's most impressive about him. He wants to win. With less key. This is Dale underneath with the big guys to put it back. But Cornell didn't go after any offensive rebounds in the first half. They just tried to get back. But Dale's gone after two or three thus far in the second half. That was the first one he's got. And while Ryan Whitman, their leading scorer, averaging 18 a game, has only one shot made, a three-pointer early. Patterson won't come down. Foot gets the loose ball. Crowd aching to support Cornell. Robleski back outside. Whitman free for three. And that won't fall. Robleski gets it back. With a long rebound. The offensive team has that advantage. Whitman's not going to get a more open shot than that off of Leslie's drive. This is a team that averages nine makes from three-point range on the season. Only two tonight against Kentucky. Wildcats by 14. Carrier Dome, football and basketball, 33,000 the capacity for the Syracuse. Look at their Mason-Dixon line of college basketball. <laughs> Well-defined for the red or for the blue. It's a great shot. Well, most of them are for the red, but not much to cheer about. They trail by 14 against Kentucky. This Ivy League champion Cornell team dominated by senior play. Whitman still looking for his second make. Robleski from outside. Short. 
Marcus Cousins got a piece of that. Didn't give up on the play. Now this Kentucky defense has just been stifling. They have not helped off of three-point shooters. They have recovered the shooters very well. They are forcing Cornell to try to make plays inside of that three-point line. And to hold this terrific offensive team to just 20 points thus far in the game is amazing. Deal with a steal. Yeah, they've altered the trajectory of the shots. Uh, Cornell having to put a lot more arc on them because they've had a big man right in the face. Yeah, look at on the ball. Uh, just Cousins out the hawk. Whitman. Robleski has ball on him four inches taller and a lot longer. A reminder right after the final four CBS Sports again proudly presents a tradition unlike any other the Masters from Augusta National. Cornell's inserted Eric Peck the freshman into the ball game great athlete and he is blocked by Cousins gets it back and a foul on Cousins. It's his second everything up by the rim is contested. I mean, Patrick Patterson goes up to block it to Marcus Cousins. Peck winds up getting it back. But even though you can draw the defense to you, I mean, Kentucky goes after every block with amazing vigor. Eric Peck in the book. He's averaging a little over three a game and the only freshman in the rotation for Steve Donahue. He's from Indianapolis. Hoping he could take his team back to the home city for the final four. One out of two for him. Now sticking with man to man. And that good success pushing the ball inside. If they can get it into Cousins, they should give it to him. Cousins sets up Patterson. Can't make the three. Reeves holds in the rebound. Still a good pass by Cousins. He is a very skilled big guy. And there's Cousins looking at a big guy out there on the small man Dale and still able to get the hand on the ball again. Well, he's very talented. Moves his feet. He's come a long way. He's worked really hard. He's got it. He's good. He can be as good as he wants to be. Look at that. They started two for three on three point shots. Cornell. They've been shut out on the next nine. Blocking foul on Bledsoe of Kentucky. His second. Dale did a nice job of driving right into the contact. Got a little bit of an angle on Eric Bledsoe. And Bledsoe is a terrific individual defender. He's got the arms of a man 6'7", even though he's only 6'1". He's really athletic. Off the mark. Peck not able to hit. Wall hustles it back the other way. And Miller inside to score. So Kentucky, that's been the story. All but two of their field goals have been made right at the iron. They just take it inside and did it well most of the first half. They try to stop the ball, but Cornell is giving up on the first pass, giving up middle. And Darius Miller had 20 points, nine rebounds against Wake Forest in the second round. Dustin's upset. He gets the whistle. Didn't believe it. It's his, his third foul. Whitman to everybody trying to stop the ball. And Curry, when he closes out, just gives up middle. And you got a 6'8 guy who is not fleet of foot closing out to an athletic swingman. And that's a mismatch. Meanwhile, Cornell offensively, when you made this great season, an all-time record winning season in the Ivy League on three-point plays, and you just can't get the shots off. And when you do, you've missed nine in a row. How oh, disheartening that must be. And credit that fully to the great extended defense of this Kentucky team. Inside now to foot. And he's blocked with two hands by Patrick Patterson. Outside another three misses. This one from Jeff Reeves. And Patterson went up there like a volleyball middle blocker. <laughs> he didn't. Miller at the other end. Three rebounds. Robleski the other way. Actually, a little cold spell here for Kentucky, but Cornell can't take advantage. Whitman misses again. He has only one shot made in the game. Foul underneath. It'll be on Peck. Patrick Patterson on the little drop step by foot. You get a kid. Is, is that, that's got to be, that's like a block in, in volleyball. Both hands. 
That's big time. Peck's first foul. Kentucky goes the other way. Team fouls four on Kentucky, four on Cornell. Make no mistake about it. Kentucky is 15 points ahead because of its defense, not its offense. And they have scored very efficiently off their defense. Patterson, good position. And he has seven. Well, there's nothing that Eric Peck could do. He gave up that deep post position. And Patterson just turned shot right over. Wobleski and finally a three-pointer drops for Cornell. Let's see if that inspires a rally. First points for Robleski, who's hitting 45% uh, of his three-pointers. This is a team that shoots almost 44% as a team from outside the line, but not against Kentucky tonight. They've missed 10 in a row from outside. Two three zone. Kentucky's got to look to penetrate it. Horton with foot. Dribbles off the iron, and Robleski, the little guy inside, to get the rebound. What's so on him? find anything with Darius Miller guarding him. There's Whitman. He's tied up by Wall. Foul on Wall, or is it? Yes, his third. Timeout. All right, Butler and Xavier. Wouldn't that be something on Saturday? We have West Virginia taking out Washington in our first game, 59-56. If Kentucky wins, it'll be, and there's Bob Huggins scouting the Wildcats and the Big Red. If Kentucky should win, it'll be the only one versus two matchup in the tournament. Been a volatile tournament with a lot of the higher seeds losing. Syracuse going out to Butler, Kansas, getting beat in the second round by Northern Iowa. But the one team that has played almost flawlessly throughout the tournament has been Kentucky. Now, this hasn't been a, perhaps a great offensive performance, but defensively, magnificent. Jakes from the corner, well sure. That was the shot he was making in the upsets of Wisconsin and Temple. Well, they've not had many open looks. One of the few open shots they've got in this game. Not just the second half, but in the game. Three for 16 from outside the line for a team that shot over 43% on the season. And full credit, full marks, high marks defensively to this Kentucky defense. What a year for the Ivy League, not just with Cornell, but first time in the history of the Ivy League that three teams in the Ivy have won 20 or more games in the same season. Cornell, Harvard, and Princeton all won 20 or more. Tommy Amaker doing a nice job there with the Crimson of Harvard. And Sidney Johnson also at, uh, at Princeton did a terrific job this year. Miller short on a 4-3. The clock is running down on him. He took it at three seconds. Jakes. And again, he had to alter his shot with the big man jumping in front of him, but hustles after the rebound. Well, just short on it. Inside the foot. Orton defending him. Lots of muscle, but no result. Dale now out of bounds to the big red. But Dale really got up there to try to tip that in with the left hand. Really getting off the floor. It's only 5'11, high jump 6'2 in high school in Birmingham, did Lewis Dale. Triple jumped uh, well over 45 feet. Not recruited. He sent a highlight film to Cornell. Came up to the campus on a visit with a $400 check saying, here's my admission fee if you'll take me. Why not? There's a hold against Kentucky, and uh, that'll be their fifth team foul. Calipari not happy with the fall on Liggins, his third. And you certainly don't want to foul Ryan Whitman. Let's him shoot a couple free throws, and you let a scorer see the ball go through the net. And he's not seen the ball go through the net since early on in the ball game. Curry comes in for Jakes. That was the seventh team foul on Kentucky. Looking for his fourth point. He's one for six from the floor, an early three-pointer. <laughs> Tournament summary, Butler, first Elite Eight appearance in school history for the Bulldogs from Indianapolis, West Virginia. Their first Elite Eight in five years in Syracuse. Goes out to Butler. A long day for the folks up here on the campus of the Big Orange. So Whitman, a couple of free throws. He gets a rest. Adam, Adam Wire comes in. 
One three one by Cornell and it seems like more than a 12 point game but it's only a 12 point difference between these two teams. And Cornell of course you can make up a lot of ground with the threes if they can hit them. Patterson traffic control outside. Cornell has to make Kentucky shoot a jump shot. Horton. Ball knocked away. Look at the hustle by Patterson and he saves it for Kentucky. What a play by the big man. You think he doesn't want it. He's been an inspiration to these freshmen. He's taught them how to play. Well, he's just a workhorse. Diving on the floor to save that ball. And well, that was a ball that Cornell should have got. Well, what a play by Patrick Patterson. Knocked it off uh, Jeff Reeves out of bounds to Kentucky. Kentucky in a bit of a drought over 10 minutes played to the second half and they scored only six points this half but it built up a 16 point advantage at the intermission. Whitman out briefly back in for wire. Only eight seconds left on the shot clock for Kentucky. Wall will set up someone maybe himself. Got away with the wall wall wall. Bledsoe in the corner can't hit the three. Whitman with a rebound. Desperately needing a three. Cornell nine and a half to play. Wilson setting the screen and a set up at the three point line. Two pointer Robleski. Down to a 12 point lead. 10 points 38 28. Now it's crowd now comes into it. Cornell fans a dominant big red support. They've been aching to cheer this Ivy League champion team against powerful number one Kentucky. Back to man to man for Cornell. Wall in the corner to Liggins. He misses everything but it goes right in the hands of teammate Cousins and he draws the foul. Well, Cornell turning Kentucky more into a jump shooting team the last several possessions but they have to limit Kentucky to one shot. This is an outstanding offensive rebounding team. They get over 40 percent of their misses. Team shoots 48 percent but gets 40 percent of its misses. That's pretty darn efficient. The foul was on foot his first and Cousins problems at the free throw line continue. He's missed his two attempts tonight. Kentucky is a team making only two of seven. And another miss and that's out of bounds to Cornell. If Cornell can get a bucket here. The Big Red can put a little bit of game pressure on Kentucky. Kentucky's been playing like a team with a lot of a lot of cash in its pocket. Let's all pressuring Dale in the backcourt. 840 to go. Dale can't get inside. Shut off by Miller. Outside and hitting. Off the bench, Eric Peck gets his first field goal. It's down to an eight point game. Big Red fans starting to believe. Patterson inside. Double team. Cousins to Miller. And a foul. A bumping foul will go against Whitman. And Ryan Whitman of Cornell has his third. It's the fourth team foul. In comes Mark Curry, 6'9 senior from West Bloomfield, uh, Michigan. Out goes Peck. Peck gave him some good minutes. Here in Syracuse. DeMarcus Cousins with another short bank shot for Kentucky. It's been a cold Wildcat team for 12 minutes of the second half. And uh, Cornell has pulled within eight, but that basket by Cousins gives them a 10 point advantage. 750 to go. But again, they're defended that three point line, Kentucky. Very, and there's another steal by Wall. He is so quick. Now a scramble. Boy, a wild scramble. And finally a whistle. Remember at the very start we heard Steve Donahue in the locker room says we're going to win those loose balls that's going to help us take victory from Kentucky but that's not been the case of been very few of those. Scramble for the loose ball in Syracuse Kentucky in front.
Well, Kentucky had runs of eight unanswered and 11 at the end of the first half to build a 32-16 lead. Then it gone cold in almost 12 and a half minutes of the second half. They scored eight points and yet hold on to a 10-point lead because their defense continues to stifle that three-point attack of Cornell, only three for 16 for the Big Red. Well, Cornell has only turned it over one time in this second half, but the Big Red has had a lot of difficulty finding open shots. Five of 21 in the second half for Cornell. Kentucky's four of 12. Bledsoe takes it inside, and he's fouled. Bledsoe just catching the ball at the free throw line and turning and driving. It's so hard to keep Kentucky out of the lane. In the first half, they attacked that lane so effectively, not as effective in the second half. They've settled more for jump shots. So Bleski picks up his second foul. Well, Kentucky should be way ahead in this game if they knock free throws down. So two for nine. Bledsoe, 68% shooter, misses both. Whitman with a rebound. Plenty of time, 7.20 to go, but Cornell has to start hitting the specialty, the three ball. And look at even Cousins comes out to defend the three. Well, Blusky can't get away from another big man, Patterson, and then Wall picks him up. Wall has stayed right with Blusky. He hasn't had any open looks. Switching that exchange. Down to six, down to five. Dale takes it inside. Short banker, Curry off the mark, and Cousins muscles up to the rebound. Lewis Dale's really the only guy on the floor for Cornell that can make a play off the dribble. Other than that, it's got to be good offensive movement to find an open shot. There have been no open shots for Cornell. Miller takes it inside and then sets up Patterson, blocked by foot, and last touch uh, by Cornell. Back comes Eric Peck for Cornell, for Curry. That's one of the things that has made this Cornell team such a difficult team to beat. You know, they've not only got outstanding shooters, but they've got a big guy inside. You remember when George Mason went to the Final Four in 2006? People always talk about guards, but they had Will Thomas, the 6'8 lefty, and Jai Lewis inside. They could score and guard in the post. And they're looking to see if it hit the rim. And right now, there's 12 on the shot clock. And it did not. So that's the correct count for Kentucky as they inbound the ball. 12 left on the shot clock. Well, we have a moment here. Not that the game is over by any means. But if one should meet two, Kentucky and West Virginia, how do you see that matchup? Both outstanding defensive teams, both terrific rebounding teams. And both teams at times, their best offense has been a missed shot. And Bob Huggins has lamented all season long if his team could just knock shots down, how good would they be? Because defensively, that's an outstanding team. They're long, they're athletic, they can switch every screen. But the problem is, without Chuck Bryan in there, they're down a player. Patterson, uh, perhaps in haste with the clock ticking down, loses it out of bounds. He's trying to muscle his way to the basket. I think this well, not a good foul by Bledsoe. That's two points he's given up to foul 90 feet from the basket, fouling a good free throw shooter in Lewis Dale. So Dale walks to the other end, three fouls on Bledsoe. Eric Bledsoe, just a freshman. I mean, you don't want to allow an easy catch, but at the same time, I mean, that, that, that would violate the NFL's five-yard chuck rule. <laughs> Dale has missed only nine free throws all year, 55 out of 64, an 86% shooter. His first trip to the line tonight, looking for his 12th point. And it's been so difficult for Cornell to find open shots. You don't want to put a, an outstanding free throw shooter at the line for two, especially when you get to walk 94 feet to do it. Well, into single digits, the deficit for Cornell. As the Big Red fans clinging to hope here at the 623 mark. As this young man had an outstanding college career, he's really a critical matchup in this game because he's the only breakdown guard on this team and he misses blocked in favor of the number one seed Kentucky Wildcats closing in on six minutes to go here in Syracuse a nine-point advantage wall nice throwback 
the wall. He misses. Curry gets the rebound away from his teammate foot. A five on four situation. Cousins late getting down because he fell down. But there he is to defend. Does he ever comes out on top, but it's just like trying to shoot over the great wall of Kentucky. Wall guarding Whitman. Dale, no call. Dale scores. A three. 40 to 36. Boy, and now all of a sudden some game pressure on the Kentucky Wildcats. Many of the some 25,000 here at the Carrier Dome on their feet. A 13 to 2 run. They're saluting for Cornell. Patterson can't hit. And there's a push off against whom? Against Cornell. Lewis Dale on the catch using the ball screen and DeAndre Liggins looked like he tried to fake a charge there a little bit. There was contact but when he goes down he can't defend that shot and you can't give Cornell wide open looks. Dale committed the foul a second. He'll get a rest as Robleski back in. That was the sixth team foul on Cornell. Kentucky doesn't want to settle for jump shots. They need to punch this ball inside or get something off the dribble into the lane. Cornell with their best player, Whitman, scoring only one basket of three. Five points in the game, and yet they're within six. Inside to Cousins. Good things happen when he goes in there, and they do again. DeMarcus Cousins leading Kentucky with 12. He's six for seven from the floor. Anytime Kentucky is in a half court offense situation, that ball needs to go inside. They've got to get an interior touch. Whitman inside the line. Just won't fall for Ryan Whitman. And a foul. Number 15, Jeff Reeves engaged with Patterson. Cousins getting that ball into the middle. The double team late getting there. And one on one, he's very difficult to contain. Got good hands, terrific footwork in the post. And he has really anchored himself down in that low post and gone to work. Measured with a seven foot, six inch wingspan, the 6'11 freshman from Mobile, Mobile Alabama. Oh, he is a man at 19. Patterson at the line, the junior, 68% shooter, looking for his eighth point. Kentucky two for ten free throw shooting that could catch up with the Wildcats. Patterson able to hit that one cleanly. He has just been an absolute workhorse for this team. Just puts his hard hat on, brings his lunch pail. And he's really improved his overall game from last season. Hits them both and a ten point lead for Kentucky. Back comes Eric Peck. Uh, Lewis Dale also returns for Steve Donahue's Big Red. Let's so continuing to guard Lewis Dale. Ten point lead, four and a half minutes to play here in Syracuse. A hold will go against Darius Miller. I think Miller was looking for that ball screen to come from his right. And he just gave up the baseline side and reached in when Whitman refused that screen. And again, You've got an outstanding shooter that has not been able to get many open shots stepping to the line instead of me being made to, to take a tough shot. Two for two for Whitman. He's an 83% shooter, and he misses the front end of a one and one Oh, he just had a really uncharacteristic night, Whitman. Five points, one for seven from the floor, two for three from Malone. All needs to go inside. This Kentucky team shows, even though it's young, shows the maturity, can punch it in. There it is, the Cousins. Nice and then back pass. outside to Miller. Rattles out, but there's Patterson to follow. It won't go. Tip falls in. That's a basket. Let's go to New York and Greg Gumbel. Now you fans that stay with us here, in Syracuse, the final seconds of the game in uh, Salt Lake City. And we'll 
welcome back to Syracuse. That was Whitman finally hitting a three, and it comes with Kentucky up by 12, the lead down to nine. As Xavier and K-State go into overtime to go to the Elite Eight and play Butler. Here, time running out on uh, Cornell's greatest ever season. And there's a foul. Oh, oh watch out. out. That's got to be intentional. The foot just wrestling with Cousins, throws him to the court. The second foul. I don't know whether the referees fell asleep on that, but that has got to be intentional. Calipari appealing that that was an intentional foul. Not getting the call. I mean, that's an intentional foul. There is no doubt about that. Now, let, the only bailout they've got is they called it initially, like the little reach in with the left hand. But that's a takedown. That's an intentional foul, and there's no question about it. And the officials are going to the monitor to review it. So now watch this little reach here. Now they can say, okay, there's the foul. But they didn't call it then. They called it here. And there is an intentional foul. Which would send Cousins to the line for two and Kentucky with a ball. That's impossible to miss. Impossible. They're saying it's a two-shot foul, no intention. Well, that's, that's a horrible call. That's impossible to miss. Tough to figure that one, Coach Calipari. So on the line is Cousins to shoot two. And the foul puts uh, one of the poorest of uh, mediocre free throw shooting team on the line. He's 0 for 3 tonight. So he hits that one like an 80% shooter. Well, more than at any point in the game, Kentucky still has to defend that three-point line. Giving up a two is one thing. But you cannot give up a three. Patterson keeps it alive for Kentucky. There's the height again paying off and the strength of this Kentucky team. And the will. And a terrific job by Darius Miller to chase that ball down. He's been very alert. He's played his best basketball of the year in this NCAA tournament. Three minutes to go. The Wildcats, the number one seed, the last. Not the last of the number ones, but the best of the number ones. Whistle there. Lots of body contact both ways. Calipari says, somebody blow the whistle. Down to a five seconds on the shot clock. As Curry comes in, as uh, Donahue sends in some height for, for the pick. Something up near the rim. See John Wall. Looks like he's going to come off that double set by Patterson and Cousins. But you always have to watch the big guys here on a slip to the rim. Wall with a four-inch advantage on the man guarding him, Dale, plus that wingspan. Here comes the screen into Patterson. No, it goes instead to Wall. Wall to Bledsoe, and he beats the buzzer. Bledsoe barely got back in bounds from out of bounds. Wall went up to shoot that and was well guarded. That's on Cousins reaching in. Now watch Eric Bledsoe, the inbound man. I mean, first of all, Wall almost came back down. That, that was near, that was really close to not having himself established before he came back in. Very fortunate that Kentucky was able to come away with a bucket there. Wall just about came down before he released that ball. Fourth foul on Cousins. All season fans have submitted ideas to improve the fan experience. Now 64 will compete in the Coke Zero Brain Bracket. Decide who wins 10 grand. Vote at CokeZero.com. Jeff Foote with both free throws. He has eight points in the game with five rebounds. Dale back and Reeves back into the lineup for Cornell. 2.31 to go. Cornell needs a stop. And Kentucky needs to pound this ball inside. 1-3-1 one, one, put on by Cornell. Got to go north-south, not east-west if you're Kentucky. They can afford to be patient, use some clock. Got to keep it off the sideline there. And the foul goes against Cornell. It was Foote and Dale both were there. 
goes and also John Jakes that's his fourth. So the team fouls both uh, teams from now on will be in the double bonus. Darius Miller a very good free throw shooter. Shooting almost 82 percent on the season. Uh, he's had not that many opportunities 27 for 33. His first tonight at the charity line. Six seven. He's the one of the regulars used by Coach Cal from the state, from the Commonwealth of Kentucky, he's from Maysville, Mason County High School. He's a very good on-ball defender, and he's been the primary defender on Ryan Whitman in this ball game. He has shadowed him, he stayed with him, and he's not allowed him anything from behind that three-point line. So Darius Miller has had a good ball game, especially on the defensive end for Kentucky. He's held to Whitman for two for eight and eight points. If he makes this free throw, he will have matched Whitman, the top scorer for Cornell. So that is a job well done by the sophomore. Both Miller and Bledsoe have done a really solid defensive job. And Bledsoe talked about him defending Ishmael Smith in the second round against Wake Forest. And He's had a tough assignment taking on Lewis Dale in this game. Now Dale's got 15 points, but he's had to work for every one of them. Robleski returns. One of the many three-point shooters on the season that fired this Cornell team to the most wins ever by an Ivy League team. Only five for 18 from outside the line tonight against this tough, long, tall defense of Kentucky. Two minutes to go. Whitman. Earning that two, a tough two. It's 51 41. Timeout, Cornell, 156 to go. The winner. One fifty to go here in Syracuse. Kentucky up by ten. Cornell's outscored the Wildcats by six this second half, but Kentucky getting the big play when they need it. There's foot with a block. Cornell went with the 1-3-1 and extended it. Not a smart play by Bledsoe. Dale passing up a three. With Reeves. Whitman. Tough angle. Air ball, but he had, again, a Kentucky hand right in his face. Cousins with a rebound and the foul by Curry. I'm not sure that Whitman needed to pull the trigger on that difficult of a shot. He's got a, a really quick release. And he can make shots like this, but John Wall right with him. And he was taking that going away from the basket. That's an awfully difficult shot to take and make. 128. 10 point disadvantage. There's still plenty of time. Cousins now with 16 points, two for six from the line. And Ryan Whitman averaging 18 points a game on the season. Shooting uh, nearly 50% from the floor, 43% from three point range, but only three for 10 total for Whitman tonight. Anyway, May be at least a minute and 27 seconds away from his last game at Cornell. Inside the foot, foot to Curry. And a quick timeout used by Steve Donahue on the Cornell bench. Cornell going to try to get a quick steal, if not foul. Guy's a shooter, isn't he? Mm -hmm. One ties it up. 45 to go. Because I see the monitor and it's we've got it back like three seconds before you kill me. I just I don't know why we have such a delay. Thirty-two seconds. Back at Syracuse, that's a foul by Dale to stop the clock at 117. His third. Kentucky marches to the other end. Nine point lead for the Wildcats. Again, West Virginia defeating Washington earlier tonight here in Syracuse at the Carrier Dome and await the winner of this game. 
If it is Kentucky, it'll be the number one against the number two, the only time it will happen in the tournament this year in the Saturday regional final. Bledsoe. On a team that has struggled at the free throw line, Bledsoe has been fairly reliable. Yeah, if Kentucky had knocked free throws down, this would be a much bigger margin. They would have been able to move this out. Nine for 19 tonight. And 50% now, 10 for 20 as Bledsoe connects on both. He has six points tonight. At 29 against East Tennessee State, his career high in the first game of the tournament. Whistle before the shot. Well, John Calipari getting on Darius Miller saying, why are you fouling? You don't want to foul and put Lewis Tail in the free throw line to score with no time going off the clock. Dale, the leading scorer tonight for the Big Red, 15 points. Outstanding free throw shooter. He's two for three, however, tonight. It's a great group of seniors uh, at Cornell. And that campus can celebrate uh, the best ever. And they went up against mighty Kentucky tonight. Started well, 10-2 lead, and then Kentucky took over, ran out to a 32 to 16 lead at halftime as Cornell just couldn't get off any good shots but they played better in the second half Kentucky cooled off but uh, not enough threes dropping for the big red Bledsoe filed from behind by Dale and that'll be his fourth uh, this Cornell team has had a truly outstanding season 29 wins near perfect in the Ivy League the only loss was that upset by Penn real tip off wasn't it Jay Billis when this Cornell team went out to Kansas and actually led with a minute to go against the Jayhawks at uh, Paul Gallon Fieldhouse. Yeah, I think for those that have been watching their play over the course of their development, I mean, it's been a team that's been in the NCAA tournament. This is the third consecutive year and third straight Ivy League title. And they've gotten better and better. This team matured, had mostly sophomores carrying the load two years ago, which is now the senior class. They lost to Stanford two years ago and then Missouri last year in the NCAA tournament. I think this team came into the season expecting to win and certainly did. Beat St. John, Alabama on the road. Patterson rebounds, Dale's miss, and Kentucky will again go to the other end for the free throw. And Bledsoe is stopping the uh, difficulties with four straight connections from free throw territory, and Lewis Dale goes out with five fouls, 17 points to lead. This big red team, and what a career for Lewis Dale the third, not recruited out of Birmingham, Alabama, up to Ithaca to Cornell, second leading score, 12 and a half a game, 17 tonight. But not much offensive help from the big red this evening against Kentucky. He'll get a big hand as he comes out. He's had a great career, this young kid. Reality starting to sink on this uh, terrific senior laden team. Five in a row now for Eric Bledsoe. Looking now for his 10th point of the game. As we're in the final minute, in Kentucky overpowering this smaller Cornell team in the first half, but uh, I'll play them even here in the second. Just couldn't get the three points to drop that might have uh, gotten this crowd really excited in their behalf. Long pass ahead to Bledsoe. Whoa! On a spectacular finish for Kentucky. An exclamation point on a spectacular defensive performance. Kentucky quicker to the ball. And Bledsoe fouled again. And John Wall. Just dove right over press row, even in a game that's out of hand and in hand. Not giving any quarter. Wall with eight points tonight, eight assists, seven rebounds for the freshman player of the year. Hustling right to the final second. Well, they tell the players to interact with the media. <laughs> well, they wiped out about three laptops on that move. Another point for Bledsoe and with 34 and a half seconds to go, it'll be number one Kentucky, number two West Virginia. Many of the folks in the Morgantown said, hey, we're, we're good enough to be number one. Well, I'll have a chance to prove it on Saturday in the East Regional Final as here come the senior class to the bench for Cornell. 
And the freshmen, how many of those will be back for Kentucky? Well, they certainly have made a big footprint in their first year in Lexington with this Kentucky team. Bledsoe hits yet another free throw. Bledsoe's defense was terrific in this ball game, as was the entire Wildcat team. And I know how disappointed Cornell must be, but they just ran into a, a much better team. This is Max Grove into the game for the first time. Some of the reserves for Kentucky as well. Harris comes up with the loose ball. 15 seconds to go. And this will be just an exercise and running out the final seconds. Kentucky impressively. Three straight games, three consuming victories for the number one seed in the East. The final score here, Kentucky 62, Cornell 45. <laughs>